guys, I'm Peter from Builder Boeing. Welcome to my work shed. It's now summer and this room without heating is now bearable to be in. In the winter it gets rather cold out here. I've started a new project which is side walls for the cockpit and you can see the back of the first officer side right here. I'm using the drawings made by Vida back in 2000, 2012. You can see them here. And they come with a bit of text, a lot of pages with different measurements, and they even come with two pages here with cutouts for your MDF. I got inspired by um, Mickey's flight deck. Michael did the side walls and it looked fairly easy. And it isn't all that difficult. You just need to take a few things into consideration. As it says in the text here, you need to measure twice and cut once. Now you get these for free. They're, you can download them from the internet, but there are, there are a few things, a few places where the measurements doesn't, doesn't quite match up. So make a cross reference to this with this, and then you're off for a good start. Should you do something wrong, the light blue pieces up here are not used, so you can always make extra pieces using that part of the MDF plate. Watch Mickey's video. It has many good examples of what you need to take into consideration. And uh, then I can build on top of that, perhaps. I'll just go through the different pieces and say and tell you my experiences, and that can hopefully help you. But watch Mickey's video. It's very good and will give you most of the things you need to know. I am using a plunge saw, like that, and a rail, you can see it here. And then you lay that on top of the MDF and you just cut your way through and it gives you precise cuts and it's just a fantastic tool. However, it has a saw blade of three millimeters. So whenever, whenever I make a cut, I can add additional three millimeters here, 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 the seven cuts on this piece. So that ends up in an extra two centimeters, which I don't have here. Uh, so I'm anyway, I'm, I had to take out one of these pieces and put them up here. You're gonna run into problems with number one, unless you double check the measurements. Number one goes underneath the table, which you have up here, and the width of the table is 24.7. And here we have the table cut out, and you can see the width down here of 24.7 centimeters. Number one looks like this. It's a bit difficult to see perhaps, but here you have the 24.7 centimeters, and then you have an additional piece on the side, and I've written six here. You can make this as wide as possible. Six at least, if you have eight centimeters, that's even better. Part of this is gonna be hidden, and so you can use it to fasten it to the other piece of the side wall. But you need to make it 24.7 plus an additional six, seven, eight centimeters. That gives you at least 30.7, 31, 32, perhaps even 33 centimeters width of number one. Looking at the drawing, if you add, goes from 24 here to 33, you can see that you're not able to fit number nine here. So number nine needs to go somewhere else, perhaps on MDF number two. Number one goes on the table, as I just mentioned, like this. Now this is upside down, so this is the floor and this is the tabletop. When installed, it's the opposite way. You need to adjust the height of number one from the floor here to the tabletop so that it is a total of, if I remember correctly, 37 centimeters. So number one should be 37 centimeters minus the height of your MDF. I'm using 12 millimeters, so that is 20, 37 centimeters minus the 1.2, that's 35.8 centimeters from here to here, and then an extra 12 millimeters to here gives me a total height of 37. That was number one. Number two and three and four sits on the side here. Number two, my recommendation is make it as wide or as long as possible. You need to adjust the height once again so that it fits number one. Remember the heights on these drawings are 
the total height, not taking the height of your MDF into consideration. Make number knot to as long as possible in here. So if you can, just make it longer. Now number three comes on here. And my recommendation with number three is make number two, as I mentioned, as long as possible and then cut number three. Let's see if I can take a pencil and do like this. Cut number three right there so that number three has the 45 degree cut and goes on the side of number two. The same goes with number four. Again, cut number three right there so that it comes on the end of number four, which would be here, like that. So the number three is cut at a 45 degree angle. Reason for this is it's always easier to cut a small piece like number three if you do something wrong or make an error, then make a whole number four again. So furthermore, if you do it like this, you can add wooden supports on the back here and here to support number two, number two and number four. But the main thing with number four is you should install it, I recommend, as the last part in your, in your table. And you should measure, the reason is, the distance from here and that way depends on your main instrument panel, what you already have installed. It takes around 10 or 15 centimeters, I don't remember the correct measurement. Um, so from here to here, where you can cut it, where, you should, where your main instrument panel should go, should be around 10 or 15 centimeters. Now, I already have 10 centimeters in my instrument panel, main instrument panel, going that way. So I only need like five centimeters or so. But you need to find the distance from this edge to your main instrument panel or whatever you have installed already, and then cut number four before you install it. Because once you've installed it together with the table, you're not able to make a straight cut down here. A, B and C is pretty straightforward. Just make a box. Um, but when you connect it to 9, 10, 14, 13 and 12, it might not be just making a box. Uh, let me just make move this here so that it's connected uh, flush with the edges here. And then you can see I'm actually missing two centimeters down here. I had a bit of uh, problems figuring out if number nine should go on the side of number 10 or on the back of number 10. Here I've mounted on the side, over here I've mounted number 13 on the back of number 12, not on the side. That might explain why I have a gap down there. I am uh, one I'm considering making a new box so that it fits. I recommend that you make number 12 and 13 as one piece first, make them as long as possible, longer than they are on the drawing, add an extra five centimeters or so, and you make number nine and 10 and put them together. Again, longer than on the drawings. Number nine, you need to correct the measurements on number nine. If you look down here, number nine has a height of 65 centimeters and uh, 63 centimeters at the bottom. That is not the correct measurements. Uh, number 14 here is 60.6 .6 centimeters. Number 14 is this. It goes up here at 60.6 .6 centimeters, which means number nine should be 60.6 .6 centimeters at this end. But here on the drawing, number nine, if you do a calculation from 65 to 63, you'll find out it only has a 10 degree angle, not the 20 degrees angle that's used here. So you need to recalculate. And my calculations is 60.6 .6 at this end, and then 65.7 up here. Make your own calculation and make sure that you have the correct measurement. Which means make, that, make it 65 plus an extra 
few centimeters, 66, 67, 68 centimeters. And that goes for number nine and number 10. And once you make these two glued them together, use a saw and then cut it at a 20 degree angle so that it fits here. And the same for 12 and 13, make them higher than this, glue them together, screw them together, do whatever you want, and then take them to the saw and cut them at a 20 degree angle. Apart from that, it isn't all that difficult with the back part. Next up is getting the sides on the table and then we have almost a side wall for the cockpit. Moving on, you now need to concentrate on number eight, seven, six and five. But before you can do that, let me just say, I recommend that you mount the base here onto number nine and number 13 using screws down here, put them in there. It's not going to be visible and it gives you a steady structure. Otherwise, this might be a bit wobbly. Furthermore, number one, I mentioned make it as wide as possible. And here's the reason. I'm going to take some wood like this and put it here on the back of number nine. And that gives me something I can put screws into from the back of number one, that way in, so that this is steady mounted onto number one. Furthermore, number one, you need to continue this 20 degree climb, 20 degree angle. And the easiest way of doing that, I reckon, is to take a ruler, then just place it there, use a pencil, and then mark where you should cut. Of course, that cut should have been made before I mounted number one onto the table. Lesson learned, uh, that's gonna be a bit difficult, but you need to continue the 20 degree rise here before you move on to number eight, seven, six, and five. Moving on to number eight. Um, number eight goes here on the table, on the side here after number one. You can see my number eight, I made it too short. So I need to make a new one. Always triple check, double check, triple check, and then cross check all the measurements found on these pages with the measurements and the rest of the document and make sure that the heights here are actually matched over here. You cannot, I have said this a few times, I'm going to say it again, you cannot cut these out and expect them to fit perfectly. You need to double check the different parts of the document and you need to take your own MDF into consideration. So double check these and as you can see I made it too short. I recommend you make it five or ten centimeters longer because you have to mount number eight onto something that's not in the drawings either. Number eight I'm gonna mount on the back here on the side. You can also see I've made it too long. I'm not gonna mount it on top like this but on the back like this. Okay? And the reason for that is I can then take a piece of wood like this and put it in here, put some screws onto it, and then I can mount number eight onto this piece and make it steady so that it doesn't move around. After having put everything together here, it is now time for some glorious, glorious sanding. All the joints here need to be flush and smooth, and all the surfaces need to be prepared for paint. I'm starting out with grain 60, then uh, 120, 180, 240, and perhaps I will just give it a quick run over with a 320 to just get it nice and smooth. So, let's get to work. So this is the front of the first officer's side uh, table. It's been sanded, it's been, uh, all the cracks have been filled out, sanded again with uh, grain 320, really smooth and nice edges. And over here, I've now started priming it uh, before I give it the first layer of paint. One thing I've learned over the years, never save those few extra bucks on your paint. It's gonna be visible. Just spend the money necessary, buy the good paint, buy the good primer, and uh, you won't regret it. 
those few dollars saved or euros saved in a cheaper paint is just going to make a miserable result afterwards. So I better get these primed and ready for the first uh, cover of paint. So this is what it looks like when mounted in the cockpit. This is the first officer's side and over here we have the captain's side. I'm very pleased with this. Compared to the cardboard I had before, which you can see up here, this is something totally different. There's still a few things that I need to do, like on this black thing down here, there are ribs going across. I was actually uh, searching for wood cut as triangles, but wasn't able to find any, so I need to make them myself. I just haven't had the time. Over here, I'm planning on a socket uh, for a handheld microphone, and then of course a cup holder, which is on the way, a chart holder that goes here, and a light panel up here. And then uh, at some point perhaps an oxygen mask panel, but until then that would just be empty space for uh, your iPad or iPhone, your phone or whatever you have. And then the grill here, the air grill, I've been searching for a 10 by 10 centimeter air grill, haven't been able to find any, so uh, I'm still searching for that. And then at this part here, I'm planning on a piece of metal on the on the bend here, around around the corner, so that uh, you're not able to see this MDF, the top of the MDF, so visible as as the case is right now. On the captain's side over here, I do have a light panel, as you can see there, which is actually just two pieces of plexiglass put together. It's homemade, not very difficult. And then a tiller installed on the side as well. It really adds to the realism. I can't remember if I said this, because this is like the tenth time I've recorded this part of the video, but it really adds to the realism to sit in something and be surrounded by something that looks like something from the real airplane instead of this cardboard. It's a pretty easy pr project to embark on. Um, it's not very difficult, it just takes time. Uh, it's taken me like two or three months to do this. Of course, not every day, but just when you have an hour here, there in the, the weekends, two, two or three months or so. Next up is the window frames. I've actually just started on those on the top here. Hopefully that will give me a better finish as well for this part. So I'm going from the bottom and up in a structure version two, and that will be my next project. And that should probably take me like three or four years to finish that. A few final notes, uh, as I've mentioned many times in this video, make the pieces bigger than you expect them to be, because you can always cut away, but it's very difficult to add length to your wood. When you're ready to mount it, put these bars here on before you use the filler and before you paint. I did it the other way around. And you can see there's a black line there where it joined us. And of course, if I had used filler, I could have gotten rid of that. I spray painted these, so it's a bit difficult to start spray painting now inside the cockpit. So I'll have to live with that. Furthermore, always check your angle towards the floor, that this goes up in a 90 degree angle. As you can see over here, Peter didn't do that. So it leads, it leans a bit inwards here, then it goes out again. Uh, I'm gonna have to use some filler on that to make it to make that that uh, gap disappear. On the cuts inside, uh, it's better, but always check that it's actually in a straight line up instead of stupid mistakes like that. Here, just before I end, a very big thank you to Mickey from Mickey's Flight Deck. Michael, your videos has been such a huge inspiration, and uh, of course a big Thank you to Vida who made the plans for these side walls some six years ago and they're still the best I could find. I'm Peter from Bilderberg and you guys take care. Bye bye.